how to make a Gantt chart in Excel. Good day folks, welcome to the channel. Today I'm going to show you how to make a Gantt chart right here in Excel quickly and easily. Some of the things that you can expect in this video is the setting up of your table and all your data, the formula formatting, the chart setup, and then I'm going to show you some minor adjustments at the end just to make sure that your table is legible. So let's get straight into it. The first thing we want to do here is set up our actual table. So we want to have a heading and this heading can be whatever it is that you are needing to gather data for. And then we're going to set up a table. Now on the left hand side over here, you can see that I have my tasks such as booking a location, ordering stock and so forth for my task, which is the largest pizza in the Southern hemisphere. So thereafter, we're going to have some start dates for each task and then we are going to have some completion dates. So what you'll see here is the start date and the completion date. There are 21 days difference and that is the adjusted length column. And I'm going to explain a little bit more about that later on. But the days that I need to complete this task is in fact 15 days. So if you can see that there is a difference here of six days, that means that there are six days worth of non-working days. And then as you go down the table, you will see that there are differences between each and every one of these dates, between the start date, the completion date, and then the days needed. So what we're going to do is once we've set up our table, with all of our tasks, as well as our starting dates and our completion dates, and also the dates that are needed. What we're going to do is we are going to make sure that all the dates are correct and we're going to click on the completion date over here. Now, this is where we actually start to create some formulas on this table. So right over here, this completion date, you can see right at the top, there is a formula over here and it says equals workday and then is B4 and C4. And I'm going to show you exactly what it looks like here. So if you click on that date and you tap on that button that says insert function, we're going to tap on that and you can see the function right over here. So what's happening here is the start date, which is the first of the 11th. And the completion date is 21 days. So what's going to happen is the formula that you set up here allows for those extra days that are non-working days. And that's where the day difference comes in. And then what will happen is your answer or your result will be in C4 over here. So what we're going to do now, once that is set up, we are going to then just click on that corner of the cell and we're going to just drag down and you will see that all of that information that is there will just copy down the table. So that means the formula that you've built in the first one then is going to continue down for the rest of the cells. And once you've set that up, it is complete and we can move on to actually building our Gantt chart. So what we're going to do now is we are going to actually select the start date over here, we're going to select all the start dates and we're going to right click and we're going to go and look for format cells, which is close to the bottom. Now, once you click on that, you're going to have to make that category general and it puts it into a number format and we're going to just say, OK, now without doing this step, you will not be able to create a Gantt chart. So now what we're going to do is we're going to tap on tasks and we're going to select all of the tasks. We're going to also select all of the start dates and then we're going to hold in control and we are going to select the adjusted length as well so if you go ahead and you drag your mouse cursor down there while your finger is on control you can now select that as well we're going to go up to insert on your toolbar and we're going to look for recommended charts now once you are in recommended charts there are a couple over here but we're looking for the all charts button once you've tapped on that you're going to look for the bar graph which is on the left hand side a few graphs down and then it is the second bar graph which is a stacked bar graph we're going to tap on that now you have two main options you're going to want to select the first one which is already by default selected you're going to now tap on ok and you're going to see that you have now generated a 
chart. So what we're going to do is we're going to just make it a little bit smaller just for a moment and you can now click down and drag it around wherever you need to. We can also zoom out a little bit and we can put our chart just over here. So now you've got your chart and you're pretty much ready to start building it. So the first thing we want to do is having a look at the dates. You can see that the dates are still in number format. So what we're going to do again, we're going to go over Select all the dates and we're going to right click and we're going to look for format cells. And once we do that, we're going to go back and select a date. And now you can choose a date of your choice, a type format, and we're going to click on OK. Now you can see that all those dates are in date format. The next thing we want to do is look at all of the headings over here, all of our tasks. So the way it has been put here, the location booking, which is in our sheet first on the list is now bottom of the list in our chart so what we're going to do here is we are going to swap the order around so we're going to select this and we're going to right click and all the way down we're going to look for format axis and we can now all the way at the bottom we can see that there is a categories in reverse order and that's what we're going to check now once that's checked you'll see that all this swaps around we can now close that and you can see that it is looking a little bit better. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to tap on this blue bars on our chart and it highlights everything. We can now right click and we're going to go all the way down to format data series and there are some options here. So the first little icon you will see is the fill and line and we're going to open up the fill and we're going to say no fill and we're going to look at borders and we're going to say no line. So this is the setting that you are going to need and you can close this window now. Now you can see that your data is even more legible. Something else we're going to do now is having a look at the dates. You can see that these dates are actually overlapping each other. So what we're going to do is we're going to change the way they are actually presented. So once you've selected your date block over there, you can go up to your toolbar and you can click on home, make sure it is on home. And then there is a small icon that says orientation. There is an A and B with a blue line underneath it. You're going to open that up and you can either angle it anti-clockwise or clockwise and there are a bunch of other options. So what we're going to do is we're going to do it anti-clockwise. You can see now that it is more legible. You can actually understand what is being said there. We can open up this chart a little bit more so you can actually see it nicely and again as I said you can move it around and you can really play with how it is presented. One of the next things that we are going to do here is we are going to move these bars all the way to the beginning of our chart so that we ha don't have any of this open space over here. So we are going to tap on the main part of the date. We're going to right click and we're going to go all the way down to format axes. Now once you're in format axes, you can see that there is a axis options and there is a bounds with a minimum and a maximum. Now these minimum numbers and this maximum numbers, these values actually represent the beginning and the end of the chart, meaning the start date and the end date. So what we want to do here is select the numbers over here and we are going to enter in our start date. So that is the start date on the booking of the location. So that is the first of the 11th 2023 now you want to write it within the same format so you want to go 2023 slash 11 slash 01 and you're going to hit enter and immediately you're going to see that all of these bars have moved across and it's now starting at the beginning of your chart the next thing we can do is right click on those dates again we can go back into that and the maximum over here you can actually make the end date or the the last start date which is let's cook baby which is the day that we're actually going to be cooking the largest pizza in the southern hemisphere so you can go ahead and you can use the same date format so that is 2024 slash 01 slash 24 you're going to hit enter and what's going to happen is it's going to push these bars all the way to the end of the chart so that is a little bit more 
legible. The next thing we're going to look at is going ahead and right clicking again on the date block and the format axes and we're going to go down here to the units. Now underneath the units there's a major and a minor. In the major that is representing the amount of days in between one of these lines on the chart to the next line. So currently that 10 is representing 10 days. You want to make it a little bit more legible and because we are working in week increments we can now go 7 and hit enter and we can close that again and you can see that it's a little bit more legible every step that we take. So you can see here now the book location is going to take three weeks. As you can see here it is now moved over 21 days. Some of the other minor adjustments that you can make here in fact is there's a legend at the bottom with a start date and an adjusted length. We can actually remove that altogether. It'll just give our chart a little bit more space and it looks a little bit neater. We can also go ahead, we can change the chart title. So we're going to go in here, we are going to copy the text in the heading of our sheet and we're going to go in here and we can actually paste it and so we can now see that the data in the sheet matches the data in our Gantt chart and there we go any other minor adjustments you need to make you can do so and that is how you can create a Gantt chart in Excel. I hope you enjoyed this video if you did don't forget to drop us a like don't forget to smash that subscribe button and we'll see you in another awesome video. Cheers for now, guys.